Let's do this final three problems out of section 2.2. .2. Number 42 asks us to do just three things. Determine without graphing whether the function has a minimum value or maximum value. Find the minimum or maximum value and determine where it occurs. Identify the function's domain and range. Well, in part A, when I'm supposed to think about whether this function will have a min or a max, I just need to know whether this parabola opens up or down. This parabola is going to open downward, which means this vertex will be at a maximum value. So in part A, I do know that there will be a maximum. And the maximum will be the y-coordinate of the vertex, and it will occur at the x-coordinate. So let's find that min or max, here a max. Opposite of b is 12, all over 2a is, well, minus 4. And so that x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be at minus 3. That's where the max will occur at. f of minus 3, well, I need to plug that into the function. Plug in that minus 3, I'll get a 9 times minus 2 is a minus 18, plus 36, plus 3. I end up with 21. The max of 21 occurs at x equals minus 3. The maximum is the y value, and it occurs at the x value. One final thing, state the domain range. Well, it's quadratic, so the domain's everything, all real numbers, from minus infinity to positive infinity. The range, well, that's a maximum value. So from minus infinity and ending at 21. There's my nice happy domain and range. Question number 60 gives me a question about a ball thrown upward and outward. A ball is thrown upward and outward from a height of 6 feet. The height of the ball, f of x in feet, can be modeled by this quadratic equation. f of x equals minus 0.8x squared plus 3.2x plus 6, where x is the ball's horizontal distance in feet from where the ball was thrown. Part A. What is the maximum height of the ball and how far from where, it was from where it was thrown does this occur? Part B, how far does the ball travel horizontally before hitting the ground? Round to the nearest tenth of a foot and then graph the function that models the ball's parabolic path. Well, in part A, I'm asked to talk about a maximum height. Again, it's a parabola that faces down, so this is really just a question about the vertex. So I have the opposite of b over 2a. That will tell me the x value where that occurs at. So I have minus 3.2, the opposite of b, all over 2a. The vertex happens at x equals 2 feet. To find the actual maximum height, I have to plug back into the function. So I plug f of 2, excuse me, I plug 2 in the function. I need to calculate f of 2. Earlier I did that. So I'll have a 2 squared is 4 times minus 1.8 plus 3.2 times 2 plus 6. And we find out that's 9.2 feet. The maximum value is 9.2 feet. The maximum height, it occurs 2 feet from where the ball was thrown. My handwritten, excuse me, my handwritten solutions include, include that written down in words. Part B. Part B asks us, how far does the ball travel horizontally before hitting the ground? Well, what I know is that the ball hits the ground when the height is zero. So I'm really asked to solve this quadratic equation. This question is really about the x-intercepts. I'll proceed by using the quadratic formula. Opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. 
Carefully typing this into your calculator will give you two possible solutions, minus 1.4 feet and positive 5.4 feet. That has to be our answer, unless you threw the ball behind you. Finally, in part C, we're asked to sketch a graph. Well, we throw the ball zero feet from where it starts, and I know it hits five feet later. So that tells me that I probably shouldn't go past 5.4 feet on the x-axis. So this axis is a horizontal distance in feet. This is a vertical height, also in feet. And this is the path of a ball. When you're graphing a function, an application, um, you should include a title and label both axes, especially labeling the units. All right, and up here at the top, I have 10 feet. All right, well, I'm actually told that the path of the ball starts at 6 feet. If I plug 0 in for x, I would find a y-intercept of 6 feet. The vertex is at 2, 9.2. And then I have an x-intercept down here at 5.4. And that's all the path I should plot. We throw a ball, and then it comes down and hits the ground. I don't want to graph past that. The ball doesn't bore into the ground. And I'm not going to draw the rest of the parabola because it was thrown from there. It didn't start back there. In application, we should think about what the domain should be. It's not all real numbers here because the ball was thrown and then it landed. The domain's only from 0 to about 5.4 feet. Well, that gets us through problems 42 and 60, only leaving us problem 66. Problem number 66 asks us to maximize the area of a rectangle. You have 200 feet of fencing to enclose a rectangular plot that borders a river. If you do not fence the side along the river, find the length and width of the plot that will maximize the area. What is the largest area that can be enclosed? Well, if I have a total length of fence equal to 200, and I call this side x long, I know this side would have to be 200 minus 2x. Right, because I only have 200 feet of fence, I need the total amount of fence to add up to 200. All right. Well, the area function would be that length times a width, so x times 200 minus 2x. Well, if I distribute through, I would get 200x minus 2x squared. And this is a quadratic function it will have a maximum at its vertex. So let's write down its vertex and see if we can answer the question. The opposite of b all over 2a minus 200 all over minus 2 times 2 which is minus 4 and I get x is 50 feet. Well there's x and that's one of the dimensions of my triangle if I plug x into the function, that'll give me the maximum area, but what I really want to find now is the length of 200 minus 2x. Plugging in 50 would give me that this side length would be 100 feet. The dimensions that maximize area. Are 50 feet by 100 feet. And here I have them labeled where they go, so I know that x is the side of two side lengths, and 100 I only length one. I only have one length that side. I'm also asked for the maximum area, and I can totally plug 50 into this function to do it, but I, I can also just multiply those together. The maximum area is 5,000 square feet. And there we have it. We've maximized that plot of land and completed all of the problems we set out to do in section 2.2.